buddy. Here we go. I'm back from a little bit of a break. But the good news is we're going to start off right where I left off on the last stream. If you don't know where that is, you can always check up on YouTube. All the videos should be there. I mean, if you're watching this at this point, it's on, it's on YouTube probably. But let's go. We got some streaming to do. We got to find Galof. Ah, Gal- Hey, look, Butts loves pitching tents. Bam, 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 Galoof is going to have to be a mixed at night when I have to run the temple here. I should have thought of that. No. Die, monster! You have an alarming a lot of hit points. I think I've won that battle before. Just being lazy. R he is. It's the Exodethu. Fortuitous timing. Perhaps I should thank you. You are about to become quite useful to me. Butts in the sky. not very smart. What up, Super Dave? Glad you could join us. How are you doing tonight? Tired, yeah, me too, man. It's um, I don't know if you're outside of the United States or inside of the United States, but I was running around and I decided to go for a 5K today, and it was 96 degrees outside, and that's without the like real field temperature or humidity or whatever. Ugh. Yeah, so 96 degrees Fahrenheit outside and I went running for a 5k like an idiot I don't know why I keep doing that like I know what's going to happen I just exhaust myself so you got your stuff here but all the other characters kept all their stuff I don't like that I don't like that at all I'm in Mississippi <laughs> Well, I'm in Florida, okay? We, we get similar shit. Mississippi's a little bit worse, I, I'll admit. Like, I've, ugh. 
I don't know where you are in Mississippi. I've been to uh, Gulfport, Biloxi before, and I went there in March. wasn't horrible, but I knew I didn't want to be there. Okay, tell me about humidity. I know it's worse in the Gulf. I spent a year in Pensacola, and that was... Uh, the summer was miserable. Just miserable. Uh, so I gotta make him a Mystic Knight here. No biggie. But I'm sorry you're in Mississippi. Mississippi is a terrible place to be, in my opinion. Unless you like it there. Uh, not every place in Mississippi is bad, I imagine. Some places are. Gulfport was actually pretty nice. I'll say that. Get inside trying to get work done before I take the next week off. Hell yeah, next week off. But like I've seen, I've seen what's going on in Jackson with like the water and stuff like that, and how they just can't get stuff right over there, and it's just that's awful. Seeing people suffer like that. Lived in Gulfport this summer, working on electric transmissions lines. So what'd you think of Gulfport? So I take it you're not usually in Gulfport. What'd you think of Gulfport? Because if it wasn't for if it wasn't for hurricanes, like I would love to move to the Gulf. But it's just um, when I lived in Pensacola, that's the year Ivan came through. I know you're probably Mississippi. It's not Katrina. There's never going to be anything that compares to Katrina. But that was the year before Katrina, I think. And that was oh, that was terrible. Ivan was awful. Familiar with Biloxi. Not a beach guy, but I like the town. I enjoy the Ocean Springs. Yeah, I like the town, too. That's what I'm talking about. Like, I, like the beach was nice enough, but, like, the town was quaint. It wasn't too big. People were relatively friendly. A good retro store for video games. That I found there. They had a bunch of TurboGrafx stuff, and I didn't even think that, like, people in Mississippi knew what the TurboGrafx was. So, you know, I learned something. I'm sure you did. Rah. Ocean Springs. Yeah, I was really surprised that there were, um, like, stores that appealed to me there. That's not something... I guess it's just me, like, catering to my stereotypes of places like Mississippi where, you know, I grew up in the north my entire life until I was 18. Entire, my entire childhood, I should say. My entire adult life had been down in Florida. And, uh, so you still get these preconceived notions that everyone in Mississippi is a redneck. And so I wasn't expecting to find anything like nerd culture there. Uh, Mississippi has its hidden nooks. It certainly does. And, uh, one of the things I loved, I went to a restaurant called uh, Muddy Waters, I think it was. It was either in Biloxi or Gulfport. That, oh my god, the barbecue there is absolutely fantastic. I would kill to go back there just for the barbecue. Like, for a night. I inconceivable! Well, um, well then. I love you, Gilgamesh. That's enough of a beating today. I agree. Don't step out of line again. Oh, I will. I know that we have people that are stationed over Meridian. I know some people are sta who have been stationed Meridian. And they say that place is awful. I like living here for the most part, but I'm also not out in the sticks. That's good. That's good. So I'll have her be a white mage again. Yes. Okay. 
She'll just have to do what she does here. They'll go back to being a bard. You learn your jobs, sir. Meridian is a terrible town. Yeah, so, like, that's... Yeah. See, I don't want to talk shit about states too much, because I know a lot of people talk shit about Florida. No, I did not want to make him a dragoon. Why did I do that? So I don't want to be like, oh, yeah, Mississippi, nerd to dur But, like, you know, areas, people can like their areas. I like my little area here in Jacksonville. It's not bad. I like the people around here. Why am I just, like, having a complete... There it is. Okay. Get stationed around Biloxi or Hattiesburg. You'll have your culture, your oasis near the coast and college towns. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like, there's a, there, I mean, I would just go, I would just go to that area for the food, if I'm being honest. I just want good food. That's, uh, you're not far from New Orleans. Uh, so you can always drive out there, too. Mobile's, I think it's Mobile's on the bay. Yeah, Mobile Bay. Yeah, Mobile's not bad. I'm not getting stationed anywhere after this command, though. Like, my days of being stationed places are done. Like, I'm at my last station. So, um... I'm trying to find a job here in Jax. One big small town. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, you and Alabama. Alabama and Mississippi to me. They're like... They're like twins. Also Louisiana, like all three of those states. Louisiana is a little bit different. And Western Florida is essentially Alabama. I better not let them see me. Completely different breed of Southern. Yeah. Is it really that much different than Mississippi? I mean, you're going to say yes, so I mean. Who am I? I don't live there. You don't fuck with the French rednecks. Fair enough. Fair enough. Is this where I have the battle on the big bridge? Not quite yet. The devilfish. Why are my character so slow? Haha, <laughs> it's now an old devilfish. Now it's a stopped and old devil fish. Is there job sickness in this game? No. No, none at all. You can swap jobs at will. Now the battle on the big bridge, I believe. Yes! Let me go save the game here real quick first. Here we go!
Oh, another theater than fan. Awesome. I've only I only have the one for the DS. 3DS. 3DS. Play in the arcade too. That's like really interesting in the arcade. It's also the song that goes hardest. One second, I think my dog went out of the room now that I'm jamming out. One sec. Hey, bud. Run out. Go. Bards are so cheap. Thank the gaming gods for bards. What is a Romeo ballad? Oh, I don't know. It's just it puts uh makes the enemy stop. It gives them temporary stop. Here we go. Okay, so that's not gonna work. Poison. I don't think he has any elemental weaknesses. Why don't I just use protect? What am I doing? Haha, <laughs> now you're poisoned. If they could just old right now. 46. Regen. Goblin punch. Uh, let's go right here. Everyone's protected. Now, now, this is where I wish I had a time mage. Now I can just haste everybody. And let's go. Slash. When am I going to learn shell? I need to learn shell. Shell gun, protect a guy. That'd be super useful right now. How'd you miss? You suck. One of my sword users. I can't have you miss. See, I can understand how someone misses with a harp. I don't understand how someone misses with a sword. You're an expert swordsman. There you go. So what do you have coming up on the anime treehouse there, Super Dave? What can we expect in the near future? And go check out Anime Treehouse Club. It is a podcast hosted by Super Dave. Just finished editing Trigun. Ooh, I'm excited. I am excited. I love me some, some Trigun. One of my favorite anime series. Treehouse Anime Club. 
I thought I said that. They say anime treehouse. I, okay, treehouse anime club. I'm sorry. Go check out treehouse anime club. Hosted by Super Dave. Haste. That's not good. Fighting all four of you. Give Super Dave a listen. It's retro hangover quality shit right there. There you go. What's going on, Captain N? R T E apostrophe D. In the future, we have Violet, Evergarden, never heard of it. Hmm. Revolutionary Girl, Utena, heard of it. I heard it's the horniest anime without sex. And for episode 10, Outlaw Star. I have not watched Outlaw Star. The American dub was pretty cheesy. I just finished Final Fantasy 16, and now I need a day to take it all in. Okay, uh, initial thoughts. Initial thoughts. What's your initial thoughts? Let's hear the initial ones. Oh, you can jump too. Cheating bastard. Uh, let's go with... Let's see if silence works. Best Final Fantasy since 10. Great story, great gameplay, good pace. Music is 10 out of 10. And pays homage to some older, older Final Fantasy games. My personal opinion. Okay. Uh, it's my game of the year contender, but won't when compared to what it has and is coming out this year. It makes me consider it PS5. See, I don't... The only thing I don't like about saying it's the best game since Final Fantasy X is they're not the same kind of game. Final Fantasy X is an RPG. Final Fantasy XVI does not look like an RPG. That's fine. I'm not sitting here going to bitch about it, because a lot of people are just like, Oh my god, it's not turn-based. I don't care. But it's it's direction Final Fantasy chose to go in. That's okay. That's okay. It's just it's hard for me to say best Final Fantasy since any Final Fantasy really, unless you're including 15, because they're not the same genre of game. I get you, I get you. No, he does not like my white mage. Well, that time is my bard. But he doesn't realize they can all, like, attack. So silence doesn't work here, unless silence already worked. Electrocute. I just don't get why, like, I'm doing no damage. Panacea, good for you. Uh, so... I wonder how many hit points he has left. This is taking a lot longer than I'm used to. I wonder if this was fixed in the patch. Because he is, like, taking no damage... And I've seen I've seen that with a couple other bosses. In this playthrough, like I'm I'm supposed to be what the fuck, man. It's like they're not they're not taking nearly as much damage. Couldn't tell you why. Yeah, the fact that, like, he's only doing... Now I don't have Dispel. Uh, fuck. 
They all have protect. Oh no, Gloop doesn't have protect anymore. It's called Rage State. But here's the thing, like, routinely I do this. I've played this game pretty often over, you know. What's here? Okay, old. Fuck yeah, old. Get him old. Fuck you. And I've never seen myself, like, be this limited in my damage out output. And I, I don't... Okay. So I don't know what's going on. Panacea, of course, Panacea. Ah, there we go. Man. That's a little irritating. Oh, sure, I'll count on it. Oh, I just got done with the boss. What are you bastards doing? This isn't fun. And they're faster than me? This isn't fair. sing you to death. That's not good. Now what am I fighting? Same thing, huh? Stopped. At the end. Oh no. Not grandpa. I think there's a wolf in the next village that's going to teach me a new song. 
Almost. Hopefully I can get better gear so I can actually do damage. I am not happy with my damage output. At all. Look quick. What's going on, Discomer? How you do tonight? Thanks for stopping by. Weird, ugly things here. I was feeling really terrible the last few days, but found my resolve again after talking to someone. That's good. That's good. So it's good to have someone to talk to. Christ. You know what? I should have done stop. You know, when you're ever feeling down, it's it's always good to have someone you can talk to, get an outlet. And I, I I advocate, if anyone ever is feeling down, just make sure you're talking to somebody. Let someone know. You know, it's okay. You never want to, like, feel like crap. Feeling like crap sucks. Of course, it's important that you don't, you know, feel like crap. Or if you do, I mean, it's okay to feel like crap, too, because everyone does. But just having someone to talk to, that's the important thing. Being able to admit it. It was mostly art career related and help came from someone I wasn't expecting to help. That's pretty cool. There's some hard lessons from this. So are you saying that you heard what you needed to hear as opposed to hearing what you wanted to hear? Because usually that, that's the most helpful. Or at least I've been told that, you know, that's the saying. I think these guys are weak to fire. Alright, I'm stopping you all. You're annoying me. Something like that. Hmm. Well, if it's any consolation, I don't I don't know how it's going specifically with your art career, but I know whenever you share something with us, I I think your art's good. I think you have high quality art. I really think you're doing a really good job with it. But um, that's probably not what you were looking for. So I'm glad that you got that help. I'm glad you heard what you needed to hear, or something that was helpful to hear. By the way, Discomare here, since I... I gotta get the name of Super Dave's podcast correct, because I got it wrong before. I don't want to screw it up now that it was already been in my head. Now that I've pitched Treehouse Anime Club, a podcast about anime, and you should go check it out. As Captain N said, it is retro hangover quality. You should also check out the channel Game Over Hell, which is hosted by Discomera. It's over on YouTube, so go check that out. High quality reviews. Highly recommend it. 
He, re he often reviews uh, some of the games that we do for our uh, our HRC, our re uh, Retro Hangover Review Crew, which is in our Discord. And if you're part of our Discord, uh, and you're watching this, well, on YouTube, it might be a little too late. We're going to have a new theme next month. Our theme next month is going to be uh, Steam games that have a review of overwhelmingly positive and are less than $5. And you can nominate that game if you get into our Discord and play and review Sexy Parodius for the PlayStation 1, Arcade, or Saturn. So if you feel like nominating a game, just uh, complete that game and let us know what you think. Or if not, uh, just stand by for next for next month or this month if you're watching it and uh, play the game that we've, that we've picked. It should be cheap because it's supposed to be less than $5. Game Over Hell. Yes, Game Over Hell. Well, I have plenty of uh, podcast friends out there for you to listen to. I think you know that. They all they all uh, converse over at our server, and I, I'd recommend all of them. I finally got Shell! Holy shit! Thank you! Yes, Drain! Yes, Break! Yes, Bio! We are... We are in business! Woo! Had to set the search filters. Damn, it sure is nice having use for magic shops. Yeah, that's right. What what classes did you have in your playthrough again, Discamera? Blue Mage, Chemist, Ranger, and Berserker. Yeah, oh. Yeah, you had no need for that, did you? Ooh, I wonder if they're... See, the thing about... The, the wonderful thing about the Mystic Knight is that if they're weak to it at all, you have a 100% chance of inflicting that status effect. That's true. You didn't run short on money. Yeah! <laughs> Here we go! Here we go! Oh, I'm loving this. I might pick a Final Fantasy game to finish over my break, but I'm not spending my vacation gaming. I don't blame you. Do not spend your vacation gaming. Spend your vacation vacationing. There is my damage. There is my damage. Ha <laughs> ha! Yes! I wasn't suffering until, like, recently when I realized, like, Mystic Knight doesn't, doesn't do any damage. And for some reason, my, my Dragoon is not doing damage. <sighs> Which really makes me wish I had, um... I wish I got the samurai instead, man. Now I just need to focus on getting gold, because I'm going to need to get equipment here. <sighs> I need to spend money. No, Romeo's ballad. Oh, this is beautiful. I'm just going to sit back on auto battle. It's fantastic. Break is great. Oh, he needs to attack. I forgot to set attack. That would be helpful. Okay, now it's over. That, I was wondering what was happening.
I hope the other games give me the same satisfaction using the bad stat death spells as much as Final Fantasy 2 did. I don't think they will. Final Fantasy 6 does, but you need to play the Super Nintendo version because there is some... There are some ways to really tear that game open because it's buggy as hell. So, uh, the original Super Nintendo version, what you could do is you could cast Vanish on any character, and if any character was vanished, when you casted Doom or um, X Zone, it would automatically kill. Yeah, Vanish Doom. Okay, so you know. Okay. X Zone is another one that works. Alright, later Super Dave. Peace. Treehouse Anime Club, check it out. Yeah, like, if, if you're going to give people status effects and elemental effects, you you kind of need to have them, you know, be able to use them. Or else it's just, you're, you're attacking all the time, and that's not fun. Also because the like the every single spell has to have some ridiculous you know cinematic to it. So even if they weren't even if they like did not have the resistance. It's still annoying to cast spells in the PS1 Final Fantasy games. It's my GP at. See how much gear costs. Maybe if I get better gear I'll Take me a shorter time to kill these motherfuckers. Okay. I can see that. Dream harp. Ooh, can be enchanted. That hurts. Wind Spear, that's 5,400. Sleep Blade, that's 5,600. Okay, so I have some stuff. I have some stuff I'm going to be able to get here soon. I just need to focus on uh, grinding from cash, apparently. But Galoof got his Dream Harp. Oh, I think that increases up quite a bit. Okay. I should get sword here. What we got? What can I sell? So I can sell Mithril Swords. Curl Swords will hold on to you for a bit. Never going to be able to use Ashura. Definitely keeping my healing staff. Bows can go bye-bye. Good -bye. Ring Blade can go bye-bye. Silver, Silver Harp. That can go away. That doesn't matter. My cells are probably well enough. Keep it. Go away. I'll hold on to the ribbon just for the fuck of it. I like having ribbons. Green beret. I'm gonna put that or not. Okay. Sleep blade definitely. Wind spear definitely. Lena can equip nothing because of course she can't. Alright, cool. Something I'm missing every real time RPG I play. The cinematics. That's interesting. 
I like see the reason I like turn based is because I think I like the quickness of it. I like the rather snappiness and the appeal to it. I know that's not for everyone, but that's something I love. <sighs> Money again. Yeah, why am I not wearing that? Let's get rid of these coral swords. We need the money. Trident. Let's get rid of that. I'm gonna need it. Get some shield. Bye bye. Bye bye. Yeah. Why does this say golden armor is better? Yeah, I guess that gold armor is better. Not too big you. Man, I have to make so much more money here. Let's get one more of that. I guess. How much money I have left? 294. I should be able to stay at the end. Let's see if there's a piano here first. It has to be a piano. There's a piano. How do I get to your piano? No. I don't have to dance. There it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah! Got piano skill. I think, uh, yeah, I think I have one more. I think that's in the Mystic City. Is there a scene here? Forgotten about the scene.
It's weird, man. Every single time I play this game, I like it more and more. I keep telling myself at this point my favorite Final Fantasy is 4, but every single time I play this fucking game, I love it. It's no FF8. It's certainly not. I definitely like it more than the first time I played. Yeah, it takes. it's one of those games that takes a while to grow on you. I think that's the, the beauty of the four job fiestas. The more times I play this, like normally when I play a Final Fantasy game, it has like a law of diminishing returns. Like I know what to do, I know where to go and everything like that. But like the four job fiesta just, just forces me into this way of playing the game. And like the plot is so endearing. I don't know. I, I loved it. Gold standard of our FF, FF games. It's a gold standard of something. You know what game? Other game took a while to grow on me? Sonic 1. Oh. I could see that. I love Sonic 1. I absolutely love that game. Bye. Nine, six, five, and four are bottom of the list games. Are you trolling? You're entitled to your wrong opinion. That's cool. Yeah, FF8 is trash, and those I listed are in the top ten. I can't tell with you most of the time, dude. <laughs> Cheekiness aside, it did make me to complete playthroughs to click with the Sonic Maker Drive games. I can understand that. I hated them at first. I grew up with them, so it's harder. FF3 was on my list after I played the Pixel Remaster. Yeah, because the Final Fantasy 3 on the Pixel Remaster is fucking great. All other versions of that are kind of... Uh, I can understand... Uh, I did not like Final Fantasy 3 on the NES. I did not like Final Fantasy 3 on the DS. But the Pixel Remaster, the Pixel Remaster of FF3, like, really clicked with me. I really enjoyed it. Especially if you listen to the show, a lot of you know uh, how, I, how I felt about it, because I talked about it on a flight. What's going on, Booty? How are you doing? Nice to see you. What show is that? Oh, it's called the Retro Hangover Podcast. We do a show called The Flight. I'm doing good eating a cheesesteak. Cheesesteak. Ooh, nice. I like cheesesteak. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm a little tired, but I know I need to play this game. I need to get to other games, and I need to get back to the Fort Job Fiesta. Need to complete it. Bacon, lettuce, and provolone cheese. I don't know about the lettuce and a cheese steak, but uh, the bacon and the lettuce are definitely, definitely something that you need to have. Why wouldn't you just do the Romeo ballad? That's what you. Hmm. At least my damage outputs it better now. I need so much gill. I'm not even grinding for levels right now. I just need money. My cousin likes peppers, pickles, provolone, onions, and tomatoes. Uh, let's see. Let me take a look at that. Let me break this down real quick. So peppers, yes. Got to be green peppers. Grilled green peppers. Pickles, no. Uh, provolone, yes. Onions, yes. Tomatoes, I can take or leave. 
I, I don't... I'm, I've grown to not hate pickles. Um... But it's been a slow process. I don't think I'd want pickles on my cheesesteak. Maybe some garlic. Mushrooms on a burger? Oh, hell yes. Hell yes! I've hated pickles for a long time. It's just when, until... When I became... Not even became an adult. Like I just started eating pickles, I think. Within the past year, I've learned to accept them on my burgers. And it's like, I just, like, got lazy because I was ordering food from, um, an app. Because when I went to Wendy's, Wendy's had, like, $5 for their biggie bag. Now it went up to $6. But, uh, it was a cheap lunch. And it would just take too much configuration for me to go into the app and go into the burger and then take the pickles off. And so much easier just to hit order. I know it's, like, ridiculous, but, um... Then I was just like, fuck it, I'm just gonna try and eat it with the pickles. And I did, and it's like, okay, this isn't the worst. I can live. Force games for Sega Online NSO dropped. Crusaders of Senti, Ghouls and Goblins, Landstalker, and The Revenge of Shinobi. You know what? I own physical copies of all those games. But I'm happy that other people can play them. Like, extraordinarily happy, especially Senti. Especially Senti. When do they drop? They drop today? I'm so excited that Peach is... Uh, RH recommendation then. So let me get to Booty's comment first. Uh, I'm so excited that Peach is getting a sequel to Super Princess Peach. Yeah, uh, me too. That game looks interesting. The games look fun. Uh, recommendation. Crusader Senti is actually a really good game. It has good music. If you like Zelda uh, and puzzlers, you're going to have fun with Crusader of Sensei. I actually liked it. It's like a light version of Zelda, so I appreciated it. Uh, ghouls and... I think you mean Ghouls and Ghosts. Uh, ghosts and Goblins did not come out on the Sega Genesis, so it has to mean Ghouls and Ghosts. If you like that game. I think it's uh, I think it's good. I think it's okay. Uh, we did a review of that. I said it held up. If you like hard games, and it's a hard game. It's really fucking hard. And some people swear by it. I think it's going to be difficult to approach. So, yeah, approach with caution. Uh, what else did you say? Landstalker. A lot of people rave about it, but it has that 3D isometric view, and I tend to say don't do it, especially because it has a lot of platforming. That could be rough. And The Revenge of Shinobi, I think that Shadow Dancer and Shinobi 3 are better games. But, again, Revenge of Shinobi is a game that a lot of people love. And a lot of modern people love. This is one of those games I think that I'm on the minority to say that I don't care for it much. Uh, but if you like, sh if you, I think it's going to be good. You should check it out. Give it, give it a look. Give it a look. It's not one of my favorite though. So out of those four, my favorite's actually Crusader of Senti. SNES games get in the way. This is 2005 for another game where Peach is the main star. I can see that. Unreal Tournament looks fun. Unreal Tournament is fun. It's just old. I'd rather play Red Faction. Nineteen ninety nine, yeah. Back when online gaming wasn't as big of a thing as it was today. No, it wasn't as big. It was actually just getting started. People were just starting to get into it. Uh, I was online gaming. Barely. Barely. I was playing Choo Choo Rocket online for my Dreamcast. And EverQuest. And Ultima Online. And StarCraft. And Diablo. Uh, Diablo 2. So I was doing a lot of online gaming. But it wasn't. it wasn't like this massive thing. PC gaming online? Yeah, absolutely. Choo Choo Rockets for the Dreamcast. There's Dreamcast online gaming, too. Like, uh, it just started being being a thing. Console was still kind of foreign, like I said, with the Dreamcast, so like not a lot of not a lot of people were using it. It's because it was so new and novel. So even though the people who bought a Dreamcast was wasn't many, 
even like a small percentage of that was playing online. Game forums was the original Discord to chat with other players. I do remember that. I used them quite a bit back in the day. Uh, GeoCities chat was more what I used, but or AIM, where I found people. I don't remember how I found people. Don't fucking ask me. But uh, yeah, that was uh, those were the days, man. I would go on websites. Somehow I'd find people on AIM or websites. So here's the real cool thing about gaming back then. The thing was called MICQ. So there was this program called MICQ, which was kind of a thing that was like AIM. But over MICQ, you could send files and stuff like that. Really interesting. So we had this, there was this website. I think it was hosted by either Angel Fire or GeoCities. That was kind of like this Warcraft 2 clan slash guild slash whatever. Essentially, it was just a bunch of like-minded people who wanted to play Warcraft 2. You would design your own maps, and then you'd share them with each other, and then you'd you'd defeat the map, and then you'd send in the proof of completion into the group, and then, like, you get rankings, and, and not, they have a hierarchy of, you're like, how you'd rank with other people within your group and stuff like that. And I actually got a pretty high ranking, and it was a lot of fun. And we, we did this all over MICQ. It was fantastic. Um, there will never be days like that ever again. Ever again. I wouldn't even call it like an exchange. I have no idea how I would describe it. I'm not even sure any the accuracy of anything I'm saying because it's been so long. I just know that uh, I don't think anything like that could be replicated today. Just because it was such the Wild West back then. I hate that I'm grinding for gold right now. But it was it was it was magical. It was fucking magical. Like uh in 2000, early 2001, that's when I started doing Fantasy Star Online. And that was that was also incredible. Fantasy Star Online, I put so many hours into that game. That's when online gaming really started to click for me. Like, really started to click for me. And that's, that's how I know getting back into online gaming would probably be absolutely terrible for me. Because I, I would get addicted. I'd want to come on online. Like, I'm addicted pretty much to the Discord for the most part of... I haven't been as active in my Discord recently just because I've just been busy with games and editing and recording and work. So I haven't been as active, especially in the in like the, the Discords I'm a member of. I don't run like our, our, our friends in the podcast community. So I'm not I'm not as active um, as I would like to be, but I'm just I'm addicted to it. I gotta check it. What was the game called again? Which one? Uh Warcraft two, but we did it over an app called MICQ. Which was kind of like a competitor to, to AIM, which is what we used back then. And, um, yeah. For the Dreamcast, the game I played was Choo Choo Rocket. I played Fantasy Star Online. I played, uh, um, Alien Front Online. There's a couple other online games I had played. It was, it was a magical time. Because everything was new. I think that's everything, so I need to check. So it's got gear. Might be able to move on to the next town now. Hooray! Don't want to sell the ancient sword quite yet. I think I can get rid of the green bray. Definitely get rid of that. Yeah, I can get rid of that. Got rid of that. Don't worry, get mm. I don't want to. Don't. Let's say up. No. Okay, cool. So that's done. I 
potions. Cost too much. I don't want an ether. Why can't I buy tents? Terrified how technology is going to evolve in the next 30 years. I'm, a, I'm terrified of how technology is going to evolve in the next 5 years. Fuck 30. I'd just be happy if we're here in 30 years. The way things are going. AI serious shit. I don't know how people are going to use it. You know, you could say you don't want to develop it because there's, but there's always going to be someone who's going to want to push the envelope, be it that much more advanced, that much, that's that much more smarter, that much better. That's that's what scientists always do. For better and for worse. So I very, very weary about where we're headed in terms of technology. And, but that's kind of been you know the the saying for forever, right? Especially since the Industrial Revolution. Maybe Ted Kaczynski was right, but... It's... It's it's a consideration. You know, you gotta think. What what can AI do? What, what happens when AI becomes smart? What will AI think of humanity once it starts learning about humanity? You know, that's always been the theory. Once you teach it ethics and it has access to the entire history of mankind... What's the broad generalization assigned to us? That's that's pretty frightening. Because how old is the World Wide Web? Early 90s? Mid 80s? I know I was on it in the mid-90s. It had to be before that, you know, DARPANET and everything. But still, the amount of information that's on the internet, the amount of things you can grab, the amount of, thing that's, the amount of things that are incorrect on the internet, that's that's mostly what I would be concerned about. Because how is how is AI supposed to differentiate between what's correct and what's not correct? It's AI. It'll just if so many sources say the other sources are lies when they're not, or or so many opinions out there that are, that are unvalidated that I would have to take into consideration. Like how does an AI how does an AI make the determination that something is true or untrue? How does it do that? So 30 years. So early 90s. I mean, these are ideas that... What I'm saying right now, these are ideas that are nothing new. They've all been explored. I wasn't even born yet. I was eight. It was invented in 1989, but it was available for the public until 1983. So that's what I'm saying. Like late night, like late 80s is when it existed. Late 90s is when we all had access to it. That's what I said. Like early 90s, late 80s. And that's why I said DARPANET. Like the actual internet was. The actual internet has been around for like since the 70s or something like that. 
Like, the World Wide Web is different, but in terms of telecommunications, it's existed before that. I know my dad was on some sort of network prior to 1993, because he worked... He didn't, like, work from home, but he had the capability to do work from home. And that was in the early 90s. He had a server and everything, and I, I didn't understand. Had no idea, because they would be like, are you using the internet? And he's like, it's something different. So he may have had, like, a T1 line or something in order to do his work. These are weak enemies. Oh, I'm in Moogle World. Coupeau. The underground waterway. <laughs> Romeo's ballad is broken. I love it. I love this mini map. No. What am I finding now? More crab things. There's ballad. Thirty years from now, the internet war will have happened, and everything will go back to GeoCities and Angel Fire homepages with real media vi player videos. Dude, Discimera, I hope. I hope you are telling the truth. I hope that's exactly what happens. The world would be a better place. I want to go back to Winamp and Napster. I really want to kick the llama's ass. I miss all of it. Miss all of it. Miss the new discoveries. I miss I miss everything about it. I guess it wouldn't be so new now. And I'd be like, I wish there was something better. So maybe I don't miss it so much. But man. Those days. Those fucking days.
They were amazing. No social media either. That was the best part. Didn't have to deal with fucking weirdos all the goddamn time. And what I mean by weirdos is just people who get, like, overly sensitive to every fucking thing. All the time. Just want to complain about everything. Like, chill, dude. Just enjoy life. Either that or the internet. Says the man complaining on social media. Do I complain? Do I complain? I guess I'm complaining right now, and I guess this is technically social media. Well played. Well played. Get off my get off my lawn. Get off my lawn. God damn it. You're right. You're right. I'll chill. I'll chill. You're an American, I will assume you are armed. I I don't own any ammunition. I inherited all my guns. I do have them, but I inherited them. I have still not I've still yet to buy a single gun. I have still yet to buy a single piece of ammunition. I have no bullets. But I do own guns. Yes, I do own guns. And they are registered, with the exception of one. Yes, you're right. Arguing with people pointlessly on social media and something I just did is just generalizing people and just calling them out, which is something I just did. I understand that's not very good. But, um, yeah, generalizing people and demonizing the shit out of them. That's that's typically not... It's not great. Uh, I missed something here that Discomera said. Either that or the internet will be changed to Germa TV broadcasting Germa 24... I don't even know what Germa is. Please, please elaborate. Hell, even Discord is becoming another form of soldiering social media. In a way, uh, unless you have a unless you have a good group, unless you have a good group, and I might be biased here, but I do believe that we have a good group. Why does I go down this way? But even so, there's there's a drain. In Discord, there's there's always the feeling you gotta stay up on it, and there's been groups like I can't I, I can't stay active anymore, because it just this pulls me, you know, in too many directions, especially when you have your own thing to worry about. So, like we have the Retro Hangover Discord, which it's it's free for all to join. So if you're not part of it, please do join it. But um, what's going on, Randall? It's nice to see you too, you sexy motherfucker. But um. Like, I remember being active, really active back in, uh, Remember the Game. And I, I haven't, I don't post regularly the, I haven't posted regularly there in months, months. Very long time. Just because it gets too busy. There's even people, like, I work with quite often or, or have plans to work with or I'm about to work with. Uh, or I'm closely related to in terms of the podcast scene, like Tales from the Backlog another really busy Discord server, and it's like, if, you, if you're busy, I can't... I can't stay active in your server. I, I can't do it. Because I, I really have my own shit I need to worry about. And I hate, I hate to say that, and it sucks because I miss a lot of those communities and a lot of the people in them. But it's like... I, I gotta prioritize. I can't be everywhere at once, especially when I, I have to have something of a life or I have to support my podcast or, or support with my content and do I feel bad yeah but I, I gotta learn to put limits on myself and you know it does make me feel bad too when I like promote my content in another person's discord server like hey go check out my podcast hey here's a new episode but I'm never active in there because I remember we had one po uh, podcast that would post all the time and our same with self promotion I have nothing against them but I, I had this mentality, like, you keep posting there all the time, but you never say anything in our Discord, like, ever. Ever. And, you know, I didn't know what to think, but now I look at it, it's kind of like, I kind of do the same thing now. And I hate that. I hate that. Like, how can I expect someone to 
If someone's hosting a podcast, I'm never active in their Discord. How can I expect them to be happy with me posting, like, hey, go check out my podcast in their Discord? I'm never active, you know? Your Discord has too many smart people? Dude, dude, you're smart. You're smart. You could post there, it's fine. We have quite a few Canadians. But yeah, that podcast that used to post their post their stuff in our server all the time. They don't they don't show up there anymore, and they still show up in other servers, and I don't know why they stopped. Um, they still like our stuff on social media, and I still try to like theirs whenever I see it. But even the algorithms on Twitter, I don't I don't see their shit like hardly ever anymore. So they, you know, a lot of them probably don't see ours either. And what can I say? I mean, we don't make these decisions, right? But I do get that a lot about our Discord. It's like, it's intimidating. I, I, I just don't see it. I just don't see it, but... I don't know. I mean, if, if people are saying it, it must mean that there's, there's truth to it. Like, who am I to say it's not true? But I'm not going to change anything. I like our group. And I'm just going to continue to say, yeah, show up. I think they're very welcoming. I don't think anyone's going to make fun of you. And uh, I really hope they don't. It's the most mature Discord server I know. That's shocking, because I'm incredibly immature on there. But yes, we have some very, very mature... Uh... We have good discussions. We have good discussions. I'm happy with it. I'm very happy with our Discord. No, I, I, I've seen that before. No, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. I'm always watching. Yeah, I've seen I've seen people bring up very mainstream games. And, like, no one responds to it. And I can't respond to it because I... That's the other thing. It's not so much like it's, it's like we're looking down on you. At least I'm only speaking as how I view this personally. Like, when someone brings up a mainstream game, I wish I had something to contribute because I want to be able to contribute to anyone who comes in our Discord. But, like, if I see someone talking about Call of Duty or Fortnite or something like that, like, I don't have anything to say. It's just, like, um, I'm happy you like it. I don't know, because I know nothing about it. Um, and we have few people that, that do play those kind of games. And I'll, yeah, you're, you're absolutely 100% 100 correct. If you think that, like, the games are niche in there, and they are, um... Then it's hard for more casual gamers to have those conversations, or, or gamers that are are not into more niche titles to have those conversations. So I can understand that, totally understand it. By mainstream, you mean Final Fantasy fourteen? Then I'm sorry, I'm constantly bashing it. I'll continue doing it though. <laughs> can I kill this thing with the Phoenix down? I almost don't want to find out, because they're expensive. Okay, so stop doesn't work. Let me try casting rays on it. Oh! That was a battle. Oh, you must have been so scared. Koopo! Koopo, Koopo. Police quest. There you go. There you go. You're going to find... I think there's some Sierra Adventure fans in our server. You want to talk about niche? That's, that's niche enough where I can't even go. I, I know about it. 
Uh, but there are going to be people in there that are going to be able to talk to. I think Shane likes those games, too. Koopapo. Yeah, let's go to Moogle World. Koopo. Police King and Space Quest were the beasts of my childhood before we got the NES. Makes sense. King's Quest, though. Ooh. <laughs> that game, you can get fucked after putting hours into it. They're just like, nah, you can't beat it because you forgot this item. And you can't get that item anymore, so ha 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 ha. But when you're young, you have time. You do indeed. Can't escape. I didn't have a PC until Windows 98. Makes sense. Okay, I can't cast stop on it. Ew. Why can't I... I didn't cast save. I didn't cast save. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, thank you. Try to get a 360 emulator work with Tenchu Z this week, and it was a hard no-go. I'm surprised there are 360. Like, I'm not surprised. They're PS3 emulators. Why would I be surprised about a 360 emulator? I guess I don't care about the 360 emulators because I have a Series X, and that's essentially that. Even though it's downloading games instead of playing it off the disc, unfortunately. That's going to be a scary world. I was at the uh, retro game store. Apparently 360 is near impossible to emulate. That's... I, ooh, really? I want to hear more about that. I don't, I really want to hear more about that. I'm semi-dubious on that. Herbert never checked PS3. Uh, an emulation hasn't... I know that PS3 is starting to become successful. I'm shocked that that would be the case. Like, why? Why? It's, it's like x86 architecture. It should be incredibly easy to emulate. It's essentially a PC. I mean, I know you don't know. Or maybe you do. I'm just... I have... Yeah. It said the same thing about Saturn, though. And right now they're coming around to Saturn. Goop up. Po. Well, check compatibility. Because not every game is compatible on the on the Xbox Series X. But when they are, it's great. Some Xbox games are backwards compatible. Saturn started making good progress and people stopped depending on the one Japanese guys doing the only mainstream emulator. Yeah, that would that would make sense. Alright, I'm taking your shit. Thank you, Mr. Moogle. Ether. Phoenix down. 10,000 gil. One gil. Dancing dagger. 
in a cottage. All right, well, thank you. There's one of those stop asking me to hurry and no, I don't want to help types. Why would you? I mean, it's a labor of love. Let people, let people work at their own pace. People making emulators owe you nothing. They owe you nothing. They're, they're doing out of the goodness of their hearts. Ah, it's not compatible, but Tenchu game. Best Tenchu game, IMO, and I cannot play without a 360 SX. Oh, I'm not I'm not saying I'm not saying you don't get it. I'm just saying in general. In general. Costume. Yes, I'll try it on. But like if people ever got mad and be like, yeah, why can't this guy get on top of the Saturn emulation? I'm so upset that Saturn emulation isn't working. They don't owe you anything. Elven Mantle. Fuck yes. Probably best for my bard to have the Elven Mantle. It's like extremely, it's extremely hard to make these emulators. I couldn't do it. I couldn't figure it out. And the thing is, is like when you rush people to do shit, they're probably less likely to do it because they're getting irritated with you. And I'm all about emulation. Don't get me wrong. I, I, I will completely 100% stand for emulation. But it shouldn't be treated like like it's owed to you. Like these are real people who have to make this stuff. The company, like the, the corporations that originally came out with it, they are not going to do it. N64 emulation, by the way, I think that's still, like, not perfect. I need to look more up on the Xbox 360, though. That's very interesting. But they should be hiring some of those people to make their official emulators. That would be the smart thing to do. At that point, they're just being stubborn. Like, I would hope that um, whoever made Kega Fusion, like, they picked that dude up. Because Kega Fusion is amazing. If you, set, if you find something I didn't, let me know. I know you have to be a programmer to get Tenchu Z to work. I'll see what I can do. Have you tried uh, Zophar's Domain? Zophar's Domain usually has a pretty good list of what's going on with emulators. When he's not playing virtual hide -lide. That's where I get all my retro game music. Really? Interesting. You know, for uh, Windrake being really tired, they, he seems to make a lot of unnecessary movements.
There's one Xbox 360 emulator, Xenia, or Xenia, which is what I used, and GitHub has a patch. But I'm unsure, as some people, on there are assholes of how to get it on my emulator. That's where I gave up. Does RetroArch have it available? That'd be another place. Like, if you upload RetroArch, you usually have cores. That would maintain, uh, like, getting the BIOS. I don't know where you could find the BIOS. I'm usually pretty bad at that. Somehow I just stumble upon it. I don't even know if the websites I get it from are, like, healthy. It's probably why I get so many weird emails. No, RetroArch is my main emulator, and that's the first place to look. Interesting. So I know they have PS2 now. This is something, like, I, I try to avoid personally if I have the opportunity to nominate anything in our Retro Hangover Review Crew chat, is making sure that the games that people can play are, are easily accessible. And that includes emulation. Like, anyone can download it, anyone can play it, or it's extremely affordable. I have some people who are like, yeah, let's play a PS3 game. I'm like, Geez, who the fuck can play that? Or like um, there's one I, there's one member on Discord. Love them to death. Absolutely love them. But they're like, hey, let's play Link's Crossbow Training. It's like people aren't going to be able to play that game. Like they're just there's just not going to be able to play it. And if the, the point is for people to have fun, like you have to be able to play these things, and be interactive. You know. I understand we all love our games and we all want other people to play games, and I don't want to make it sound like I'm like bashing them. I'm not totally not but it's it's hard for people to play games when sometimes it might be easily accessible to you and that's an example like i can't if you can't get the xbox 360 emulator work if you ever want other people to play if someone wants you to play an xbox 360 game that's only exclusive to the xbox 360 that's going to be difficult and that sucks because you're not going to be able to play it it might be a game you really want to play Ooh, I got teleport. That is a white mage spell. No. What's teleport? I thought teleport was white mage. It's probably time or black. Po -po -po. I think I have a spell. I think I have some things I need to learn here. Oh, what's this? Okay, it won't open. Gotcha. That's a good place to level up jobs. I just don't really think it's that all important in a 4-job fiesta, because you're kind of stuck with what you got. Everyone's a decent white mage right now. What can I do for you?
Optimize your equipment. It only takes into account attack and defense values. Okay, well, I want the treasure. Angel rope. No one can equip the angel rope? The white mage can't equip the angel rope. You've got to be kidding me. Tuh. Huh. Okay. Wow. Chemist. Okay. Oh, we healed. I'll make sure I'm not missing a song here. Oh, shit, I got a ton of messages. Checking something really quick. Alright, let me make sure when I go to Castle Ball here at uh, Case of Narsh, because I love Case of Narsh. That's where I get my information for the walkthrough. So, uh, spells. Where can I get my spells? Magic. Song. So, Love Song and Easterly. So, as Stop says, Romeo's Ballad. Level Song, play eight songs from the Piano Master. And Crescent, okay, can't go there yet. MP Songs, Libert Not That, Power Song. So, that's in Crescent. Requiem, Wolf and Kelb. Damage to undead enemies. I need to worry about that. Surrogate, where's Surrogate? I haven't been to Surrogate yet. That's World 2, so I'll be there soon. Strength Song, that's the Barton Crescent, I have that one. And Temp Song, I have that, so I have the three songs. Okay. Okay. Let's take a look. Where do I need to go? I need to talk to Kryl. Drake is dying. We gotta get past Quelb. The monsters outside. There are too many of them. Well, we just we kill them. Together, we'll be all right. Yes. What's going on, Dave? I'm enjoying it. My party is finally coming together, and now that I have the spells, the black spells for my spell blade, like break. It's, it's becoming a laugher. And I also have the uh, stop spell that my bard has. So it's becoming an... I'm just I'm just making things miserable for the bad guys. I could not be happier. How about yourself? How are you doing? 
Where am I going? Uh oh. Oh no, I'm being sucked away. Doing good, editing a podcast. I know the feeling. Top three or uh, Tales From? By the way, Captain N, if you're still here, I haven't seen you Twitch. I haven't seen you uh, stream in a while. Is everything going to your Twitch channel? I would love to pitch it, but I haven't seen you, you know, stream in a, in a hot minute. Tales from the Backlog, Redfall episode. That's going to be. I wouldn't call it spicy. I think you have a pretty common opinion of that based off what I've seen, but I know that that episode is going to be saucy. It's going to be saucy. I was at our local game store and they have a they have a younger employee who just started working there and uh, the, the the owner who I've known for quite some time we were talking about Xbox and he was saying there's two games for Xbox coming out they're supposed to be a big deal and uh, one Starfield and the other one I can't remember and I I turned to her and I'm like so you're like the Xbox aficionado you're like the modern game person what's uh what's the big game and he's like yeah it's like and he went again, like, it's, it's Starfield, and there was another one. Let me look it up. Oh, it's uh, Redfall. And I looked at her, and I'm like, that was supposed to be, and she's like, no, it's trash. It's complete trash. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, yeah. You would know. <laughs> it's like, yeah, but I didn't think it was out yet. No, it's like, yeah, it came out, and like, it was not well received. Sucks. Yeah, sounds about right, yeah. Oh no! Recording about Metroid 2 tomorrow, did you play that? A long time ago. A long time ago. They're weak against break. That's the real question. Yes, they are. Ha 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 Suck my dick. The other thing is I never beat Metroid 2. So there's that. Aqua Thorn. You needed save states. I don't find any shame in that. I don't. Um, more as a podcaster, I, I find that like there's no shame uh, because you have deadlines. There's deadlines, so you're not necessarily playing it for fun. Like you're you're playing it in a professional in a professional sense. Like you want to experience it so you can share your views on it. I think that's a big difference. Like, if you just want to play a game so I can soak it in, I can enjoy it, I can learn it. That That's different. That's different. But when I'm trying to review it, especially in older games, like, okay, I, I cannot be fucked to go over the same thing over and over and over and over again. Because I, I know what's going on here. I, I feel you. No, 100%. 100% agree. Ha 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 ha. 
How many times have I played Final Fantasy V? This is probably my fifth or sixth time. Maybe more. Yeah, probably more. But not many times more. I think max probably nine times. Now, if you're talking about beating it, nine, like, anywhere from seven to nine times. If you're talking about starting it and not getting anywhere, that's a lot more. A lot more. And like I was, I was saying earlier in the stream, the weird thing about this game is every time I play it, I like it a little bit more. I actually think this is... If you take the source... <clears throat> if you take the source material and compare it to Pixel Remaster, they, they did this perfectly. Because they didn't mess with anything. It's, it's almost like a completely faithful remaster of its source material with improved graphics and 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 music and sound like everything is better this is this is great uh the only other one i think improved more and made an actually better game was final fantasy 3 uh this 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 is like my favorite of the pixel remasters right here well maybe three three might be because it was a new experience but this is this is a really good really good version of this game this is the best one not FF1? I fucking... I think I, I've said this... I think in the Discord multiple times. But my biggest problem... With Final Fantasy 1... Which might be the biggest... You know, benefit... The biggest reason some people like it... Is because it's, it's way too damn easy way too damn easy the fact that like ethers are something like 100 gil and ethers will give you a recharge in one of every single one of your spell slots when you use it you can buy 99 of those things and now all of a sudden your your mages which were a pain in the ass but if you manage them right were like a great addition to your party are now op they're they're way op and i understand the original versions of the game like the fighter is op uh, or, or the warrior, or whatever you want to call it. That's a really OP class. But, like, now you just need fighters and black mages. Uh, white mages, too. It's just, that game is so incredibly imbalanced. And, um, not to say it never was, because it, it always has been in one form or another. But, like, the Pixar Remaster just completely throws it off the rails. Completely eliminates any sense of difficulty... So there's no belief. There was no time at, there was, at no time in the Pixel Remaster did I feel like I was threatened. Did I ever feel like there was a chance of me losing or dying? Like zero. Um, I just mindlessly went through that game. And look, I I have no problems with easy games. I will go through an easy game. But if it's an easy game, if it doesn't put up any resistance, I at least want a good story. Final Fantasy One does not have a good story. So, this is like a complete mindless snooze fest. It's not even a camp story. It's just... It's a game that you're just going from point A to point B. And, you know, sometimes that challenge does... Does inflate that sense of, of grandeur a little bit. Like, it, it makes it a little bit more fun. But, when it's completely gone, no. And I found the same thing in Final Fantasy IV. I saw some patches have been released, so maybe a lot of that has been fixed a little bit. Um, especially in the Switch versions. Or the yeah, Switch versions, I guess, or PS4, or whatever the fuck is out there. But, um... Yeah. I know, right? Hey, look. Final Fantasy 2? Final Fantasy 2? For what? For its time. I'll say that. Qualifier. For its time. Final Fantasy 2 has a fantastic story. Final Fantasy 2 is, is really fucking good in that aspect. I also like its battle system. Quite a bit. I actually think that the Pixel Remaster is a step back from Dawn of Souls and the PSP version. I think they streamed like they streamlined it too much uh, and kind of overcompensated, which means like not the the end part isn't too easy, but the end part is almost a little too hard. I don't, it's not that hard, but um, 
like the balance, the difficulty balance is all sorts of weird because you can't level up your weapons anymore after a certain point because every, your strength is determined by your hit points and your hit points just naturally increase over the course of the game and your weapons only increase when you fight monsters that are stronger than you. So it becomes difficult when you're trying to level up your sword or your magic to level 16, which is the highest level you can get for your spells and, and magic, but you can't get it, or and your equipment, but you can't get it above like level 13 because the monsters are viewed as weak, significantly weaker than you when they're not. Uh, it has a, it's a lot of difficult, has a lot of weird stat manipulation. And again, this could have been corrected in the patch. I played this late 2021, so it's been a minute. But that was the thing, that was my problem with Final Fantasy 2. The, the Pixel Remaster, anyway. So, story was great for its time. So, one of these dudes teaches me a song. Uga Booga? There it is. That's what I wanted. Oh, that's why. That's the elemental. That was a waste of cash. So nothing there I need. There a piano here. He replenishes your health for free. Do you have tents? Tents, sir. Do you have tents, sir? I have to settle with shitty college cottages. Well, over expensive cottages. Looks like I have to. In, right? Okay. Alright, I guess this is the time for me to call it a night. Ugh. I've been editing quite a bit today. I got a got an episode for our patrons that probably won't be out in another year, but I did finish editing that. But uh, I've been sitting on my ass a lot since I came home. My ass is starting to hurt. Plus, I did a run in 96 degree weather. And that made me really tired. But I did get energized talking to all of you. So there's that. I also drank some Red Bull. Which is probably not advisable. Considering I started drinking that at like 7.30. So I'm probably not going to be able to sleep tonight. Kind of smart. But, uh... 
With all that being said, I think I'm going to call it a night, and I'm just going to save it again because I get paranoid if I don't here. All right, that's saved. Cool. All right, so I'm going to exit out of the game. Boo, 24-hour stream. Look, look, let me put it this way. We have a very long weekend coming up here in the United States of A uh, for Independence Day. And uh, that means I'm going to have a four-day weekend. That means Friday, Saturday, well, Friday's, Friday's a no-go because I'm getting stupid drunk that day for a friend's birthday. I'm going to be so obliterated. So Saturday might be out too, but at least Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, I have off. And that means a lot of editing. And that means, uh, you think I have time after today? I don't know what you're going to do. He's coming this weekend. Uh, how about Monday? So at least Monday I might be able to stream. Sunday might, well, Sunday's my stream. Sunday is my stream. Thank you, Dave. Thank you for stopping by. But uh, Sunday I will be streaming. Maybe even Independence Day. In between fireworks and, and drunk shenanigans. But we shall see. I will be... Um, and, and by the way, in fact, you didn't know because I am doing the end spiel here right now. You can take the link right over there below our logo that says linktr.ee slash retro hangover. And you can go there and you can find out where you can find all our stuff. We just released another edition. Another edition of the King of Games 1992 where Super Mario Kart takes on Mega Man 5. And I got to say, like, I can tell, like... Some of you all are having a really good summer break right now, I can tell. But you gotta go go listen to it. Go see what the result of that episode is, unless you're a patron, which you could also find if you head over to that link. Uh, you can listen to the entirety of The King of Games 1992 for as little as $1 a month, because it's all there. It's all ready for your listening if you just sign up there. You can listen to all of them. But if you don't want to, that's fine, because it will be available for free. And you can do that right now by listening to Super Mario Kart vs. Mega Man 5. And we just released an episode 2 uh, this weekend for Goof Troop. Uh, so go listen to some Goof Troop. It was our Patreon poll winner, as suggested by our patron, Studstool Smash. I think it's fantastic. But hey, do what you got to do. I, I all hope you have a fantastic night. I hope you have a fantastic day if you're listening to this on YouTube, whatever the time might be. I had a great time hanging out with everybody tonight. Thank you for stopping by, Captain N. Thank you for stopping by, uh, Dave from Tales from the Backlog. Go check out that podcast. Uh, you will be hearing from them soon. They're a phenomenal podcast, and I really hope you do check that one out. Uh, Captain Ed has a great Twitch channel. You can, uh, you should subscribe to him. Uh, Treehouse uh, Super Dave stopped by early earlier from Treehouse Anime Club. Go check them out, as well as also Discamera with Game Over Hill on YouTube. Look, I will shill for everyone who stops by and has some content, as long as I can remember it, at least, uh, because we have a great community, and you support community, you support your small creators. That's what you do. Get out there and, and help them out. But I've been rambling too long, everybody. Oh, last call. If you're watching this uh, and it's still the month of June, all new patrons for the month of June, your new contributions will be going directly to charity. All of it will be going to charity. 100% of all our earnings this month for the Retro Hangover podcast from Patreon are going to be going to the Children's Center for the Visually Impaired in Kansas City, Missouri. 100%. 100% of all of our Patreon money. We will not see a single cent because it's going to charity. And if you want to help contribute to that sum total, just head on over once again to the Patreon. So you get all the goodies, you get all the extra stuff, and you also do you can also help out a good cause for blind children. And it's a great charity. We've looked this up. It's it's beyond reproach. It's it's quality. So um you know, consider it. If not, that's fine too. If you don't want to be a patron, just you know, donate to a charity. I would encourage that regardless. But uh I just want everyone to have a great night. Have a good night. I'm gonna have a good night. I'm gonna go to bed. It's getting to be eleven o'clock. And I've been talking too long. So, until next time, play with your Harry Wolfman joysticks. Bye, everybody. Have a great night. Take care. <laughs>